Okay, so um, here's a, um, a continuation of the Bursong classifier project I'm working on. As a reminder, um, we're working with the Burkleff 2023 competition data set and uh, only working with the three species that we selected, Barswa, Kamsan, and Yiwai Guang. And um, we already did the pre-processing steps where we um, selected only the species that we want and removed duplicates. And we did the train and test split at 70-30 split. And we did a series of uh, data cleaning as listed here, which can be um, watched in um, the prior videos, which um, uh, you can find in my uh, profile. And we also did the data extraction where we extracted the NumPy array audio object using Librosa load. And um, now we're going to do the EDA um, on the training data set. So to get started, as always, I'm going to import library. So the first one I want to do is uh, import the library for drive access. And I need to mount my drive. Launch drive. This is going to ask me to grant access, which I will do right now. Okay. And uh, so now the uh, drive has been mounted, I'm going to also import the standard libraries, which is the uh, NumPy and uh, Pandas. And uh, for EDA, we're probably going to do some visualizations. So uh, I'm going to also import two libraries, one's uh, matplotlib, and the other one is uh, Seaborn for visualization. Okay. Uh, now that uh, we have the libraries imported, I'm going to uh, load the training data CSV file. So um, in the last uh, video, we talked about um, that uh, we, after we extracted NumPy objects, we uh, updated the CSV file to include a new column where, which specifies the location of the NumPy objects. Uh, and all the NumPy objects can be um, accessed through this folder right here called uh, train underscore MPY. And so I'm going to import the train uh, clean train DF with the NumPy CSV file here. And I'm going to write the file path, my drive. Slash, uh, clean C, clean train with MPY CSV, and I want to take a look at the first five rows after I load the CSV. Okay, so the CSV has been loaded into a new data frame, and we can see here we have primary label type. Latitude, longitude, rating, file name, which is where the original audio file is saved at, the duration, country, continent, and the file name underscore MPY, which is where the NumPy objects are saved at. Okay. So um, I'm going to set a couple of global variables that I'm going to use throughout the notebook. The, So the first one I want to set is a color. So um, I just like to keep the color of uh, the species consistent with what I've been using on the website. So um, here I'm just going to co um, copy over the um, color, which is, um, I saved it 
as a text file. So, okay, so I set the colors and I also want to set the sample rate to be 16,000. Okay, so the first EDA what I want to do is uh, I want to check for class imbalance. It's always a good idea to check for class imbalance um, because uh, when there is a strong indication of imbalance, um, the model could have trouble learning the features from um, the underrepresented classes. So, um, samples. So I first want to check for the class imbalance by the number of samples and each row in the data frame is a sample. Okay. So what do I want to do? I want to do data frame primary label by value counts. Let's just take a look. Right. So here we can see the um number of samples for each of the class. And I want to be able to visualize this. So uh, I'm going to put this into a data frame. First, I'm going to reset the index. And I want to um, sort the values. values by the index. So in the index is this column. And I want to do the same thing for false. And I'm going to put this into a new data frame called counts. Yeah, let's just make sure that it's as expected. Okay. Okay, so now I'm going to do the visualization and uh, Okay. So um, I want to create a subplot with one row and one column. And I'm going to um, plot using Seaborn, using a bar plot. Y is gonna be the index. And my data should be counts. And I want the color, which is specified using palettes to be the colors list that I specified up here. And I want it to be on this axis. And let's just take a look real quick. I think I'm gonna spell palettes. Okay. So here we already have um, the visualization. I'm just going to clean it up a bit by adding the um, number of um, samples for each species um, at the top of each bar, bar plot. Let's And I want to change the format. So let's add padding. All right. So now I have um, the number of samples added to each of the bar. I also want to, um, this is kind of tight here. So I'm going to set the X um, limb to I'll give this a little bit more space. Slim is starting from zero and it should be empty.max. 
uh, which is going to be the counts on the relabel. And um, I want to add, let's give it 20. Let's try this. Working as I want it to be. Let me just check to make sure that. Yeah, this is right. Three seventy two. Okay. Uh, axis dot set y label. Uh, I don't want the y label to say index, so I'm just gonna remove it. And I want the x label to say um, number of samples. And let's also make sure to give it a title. And I want it to show. I don't know why this is not changing to 375. Maybe it is. Okay. Yeah. So it is working as intended. I'm just going to do 30 to give it more space here. So it doesn't look like it's cut, cutting off at the number. Okay. So uh, the next thing I'm going to do is uh, I want to take a look at this graph here and to see if there is any significant cost imbalance. And we can see here that um, there really isn't, you know, that much difference between the three classes. Um, Barswa has a slightly less number of samples than the other two, um, but it's really not uh, something that I'm very concerned about since the difference is not very big. And uh, when working with the audio data, um, we'd probably also want to take a look at the total duration by species since um, uh, the audio will be um, the input itself. And each sample are uh, of different length. So we cannot just feed the samples uh, into the model as is. We'd probably need to trim the samples to a set duration. Um, so say that we have a sample of um, one minute then we could trim the trim it so that uh, we have uh, multiple samples, um, each with five seconds, um, so that um, you know each of the input are of the same shape when we feed into the model. Okay, so I want to take a look at uh, the class imbalance by duration, and we already have uh, the duration column. Uh, here, which is duration. So this duration is seconds. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, summarize or group the uh, data frame by the primary label um, and uh, look at the total duration of each of the primary label. And I want to group by the primary label. And I want, let's just take a look to see what this looks like. Okay, 
and I need to specify how I want it to group it by. I can do sum or con count or um, you know some other um, way of grouping it. Um, by duration. Okay, so now I have the total sum of uh, the total duration by uh, class. And similarly, I want to reset index. If I don't, then my index is gonna be the primary label, but I really want a primary label to be another column like this, okay? And then I want to sort values. I'm going to copy what I did here so that uh, uh, I'm sorting it the same way as earlier. I want to sort by primary label. And let's uh, put this into a new data frame. Okay, so now the data frame is um, ready to use. I am going to um, put uh, it into a visualization. Similarly, as before, I'm going to use a bar plot, seaborn bar plot. So I'm going to just copy this and I will change. Uh, so X is still gonna be the, uh, X is gonna be the uh, duration and Y is gonna be the primary label. And the data is gonna be duration sum. And the same, uh, same uh, palette and uh, same, I want, the bar label and X lim Y lim X label should be total duration. Okay, let's take a look. And I need to change this duration so. Okay, so here we can see that uh, this is duration in seconds, and this is kind of hard to interpret. So I am going to change the seconds to minutes. Uh, I'm going to do it here where I will add another column called duration minutes. And I can use np.where to achieve this. Uh, actually, you know what? I don't need MP dot where. I just need to do duration divide by sixty. Let's just check. Yep. So um, here I have a column for duration and then another column for duration in minutes, and I'm going to change the plot to use du duration minutes. And I want to make sure that uh, my uh, X label and the title specifies that it's duration minutes. Awesome. So now we have the duration minutes uh, and this is a little bit too much white space. So I'm just going to do 20. Right, so now we can see that uh, even though Barswa had uh, slightly more, uh, less number of samples than the other two species, it actually has a longer duration than the other two species. Um, here, you, you know, it seems like 10 minutes is not that much of difference, but um, if we split ten, an audio of 10 minutes into five seconds uh, clips as input, that's going to create a big difference so here. So um, this is a, um, a class imbalance that we'd probably want to take a look uh, when we do when we start to uh, do the models. OK. And the next thing I want to do is we have the type here. 
And I want to take a look at um, the different types by species. Okay. So uh, to check for types, uh, we're going to do the same thing as earlier to we're going to summarize the uh, original data frame. So I'm going to change this to call types and type. Let's see. I want the type and the duration since we're going to summarize by the duration. By primary label type. Okay. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Oh, I also want to go by type. No, actually. And type. Oh. Mm. Oh, I think I need to put this into a list. Okay, perfect. So now we have the um, data frame group by primary label and then by type and then summarized by the total duration. And here again, the duration is by uh, is in seconds. So I'm going to uh, calculate the duration in minutes. Let's see. Okay, so now we added another column called duration minutes, which is the um, total duration for the specified primary label and the type. And now we can visualize it using um, another bar plot. So here I want the bar plot to be uh, flip the X and Y axis. So I am going to just copy this real quick. So now my X axis is gonna be the primary label. And my Y is gonna be a uh, duration minutes. And my data is going to be duration call types. And um, I will change this to hue, which is going to be the type. And I think that's it. And we need the bar label and some call type is this is gonna be Y lin. Okay, and uh Y label is gonna be total duration now, and X label is gonna be species. Actually, I don't need it since it's gonna show species anyway. Uh total duration by call type. Okay. Awesome, so this worked, um, but it only added the uh, label to the first set of uh, bars. So I think what I need to do here is I need to add it for the other three as well. I just need to change the containers. Awesome, so this is what uh, we were expecting. And as we can see here, bar swa makes uh, almost equal amount of calls and songs, uh, while Ewag Wong makes more calls than songs, while Kamsen, um actually almost exclusively only make calls, only have, we only have very limited number of songs for uh, Kamsen. So uh, if we wanted to use call type as one of the features, this could be something that would help us distinguish between the three species. Uh, and then the next thing I want to do is I want to check for um, the, let's see. 
uh, rating. So, you know, see here we have this rating, which is the quality of the audio. So I want to also take a look at um, the rating by species. Okay, so to check for ratings by species, this is gonna be the same thing as earlier. I'm just gonna copy that. Duration rating. And it's a type, this is gonna be rating. And again, we want um, duration. Do we want? Yes, I will need the duration in minutes. Okay. Let's see this. Okay, so now we have this. Uh, we can see that the ratings is actually on scale between 0, 0.0 and to 0 0.5. Uh, with 0.5 um, jumps. Um, this is probably gonna be a little bit hard to visualize. So I'm just gonna change the rating to binary. And I'm going to add another column here to name it rating binary. And here we want to use the np.where. Uh, and this is gonna be, if the rating is, larger than 3.0, I'm going to call it as good, which means it's of good quality, otherwise it's bad. And let's just take a look. And okay, so this is what we expected. We have the rating and the rating binary. So for example, the first one rating is five and the rating binary is good versus when the rating is 2.5, the rating is bad. Okay, and uh, I actually want to group this by rating binary instead of rating. So I'm going to actually put these, this rating binary into the original data frame instead of um, this uh, uh, new data frame. And then I'm going to um, summarize this by rating binary instead of rating, okay. Let's see, let's take a look. All right, so this is what we expected. We have the primary labels, and then for each label, we have for either good or bad rating. And then for each one, we have the total duration summarized in minutes. And similar to before, we're going to visualize this. And with that, I'm going to say duration rating. And again, our X axis is gonna be the primary label and Y axis is gonna be duration minutes. And let's see, I also need to change this by quality rating. And let's see, the hue should be really bad. Okay, and we need to add the label to the second orange bar as well. And this actually looks pretty good. The only thing is uh, you can see the legend is kind of covering this. I'm just gonna make this a little bit bigger. There we go. So now we can see um, you know, each of the uh, bars uh, indicating good or bad quality for each of the species. And we can see um, all three species have around a similar number of uh, total duration of a good recordings, whereas Barswa has um, quite a bit more bad recordings than others. So remember earlier we were talking about uh, how to overcome the class imbalance um, because Barswa has more um, total recordings, uh, total duration of recordings than the other two. So here it could be uh, one idea is we could uh, undersample bar swell. So like we drop, let's say 10 of um, 10 minutes of the bad recording, uh, bad quality recording of bar swell to make um, you know the three classes more balanced. It's just an idea. Uh, we can explore more when we uh, build the models later. Okay. 
And then we have looked at the type and the rating. And uh, let's see, we can also look at the continent um, in case, you know, there is a species that's only um, present in one of the con one or two of the continents, then that could be a distinguishing feature between that species and the rest. So uh, I'm, I'm going to add another section here. Check for continents by species. And for continents, we don't really care about uh, the total duration. We just care about whether the bird is present, like whether the sample is in that particular continent or not. So I am going to just do the uh, count instead of the total duration. So it's gonna be kind of similar to the first um, bar plot we did, the total number of samples. I am going to copy this. And uh, it's going to be continents. And let's see, I want the primary label and the continent. And I want the value counts. Take a look to see. Uh, I think I need to specify the value counts by runway label. Okay. Uh, oh. Okay. and content. Awesome. So now we have the primary label and the continent and the total number of uh, um, samples for each of the primary label and continent. Okay. Um, I actually want to change to pivot this so that I have the uh, continents on the row and the primary labels on the columns. So I'm going to create a pivot. Pivot continents equals continents dot pivot. And I want the index to be continent. And the column will be the primary level. Okay, perfect. So this is what I was uh, looking for. We have the primary labels in the columns and the continents in the rows. And okay, so I am going to use uh, Seaborn again to uh, create a plot. And it's gonna be a little bit different from the um, from the bar plots that we did previously. I think here I actually want to do a um, heat map. Okay, let's see. I'm going to change this to heat map. And my uh, my data is gonna be the pivot continents, and I need to specify the color map. And uh, I have this written down somewhere here, and I'm just gonna copy this. Okay. Um. Let's see. And uh, let's just get rid of these for now. Uh, total number of samples by continent. All right, so we created 
the um, heat map, I want the numbers for each of um, the uh, primary label and continent to show um, on the, um, you know, each of the square here. So I can do that by adding an anno annotate is true. Uh, I don't like how this is in scientific notation, so I'm going to change the format. All right, and I don't want the y-axis and I want to change the x-axis. So I'm going to copy this bit. And my y-label is going to be blank and my x-label is also going to be blank. Okay, so this is what um, I wanted. I don't really like this zero dash. But I think I'm just going to leave it here, leave it for now because uh, it does, it's, it's, it's okay. Um, so for the EDA purpose, uh, we can see that all three species are uh, predominantly in Europe. Uh, there are some in Asia and Africa. Interestingly, though, only Barswa is in Americas. Kamsan and Iwak Wang are not in the Americas at all. So this could be a distinguishing uh, factor um, when we start to build the models, you know, if we want to use the continent as one of the features. Uh, one other thing I want to uh, talk about is the audio features. So um, we know we have the audios, but then um, there are a number of different features that we can extract by using the feature extraction function um, in Librosa. So um, I already put the Librosa documentation here. You can see we have many different features that we can extract from Librosa. Um, some of the most commonly used um, features for uh, machine learning models are male, male spectrogram, MFCC, RMS, spectral centroid, and chroma. And on my website, you can see um, the definition for each of the um, features. I'm not gonna go over them one by one here. Um, to extract the features, you simply just need to um, use the functions from Librosa. Uh, and there's a notebook here that I already did um, to extract the features uh, for this five second sample. And then another thing is um, when working with audios, we could also do some augmentation and um, some of the common augmentations. So add Gaussian noise, um, shift the entire audio along the time axis, um, changing the pitch or stretch the audio to um, longer or squeeze it to be shorter. So here we, um, I also added the visualization to see how this original five second um, clip can uh, would change with the, each of the augmentation technique. Uh, I'm also not going to go over this, uh, but uh, you can look at the notebook in my GitHub. All right, so that's it for the EDA section. Uh, next, we're gonna go move on to building the models and uh, I hope you can tune in to listen to that as well. Thank you.